Loch Creeran, Argyll, west of Scotland, a marine special area of conservation and a marine protected area in the heart of the UK's only mainland Mission Blue Hope spot. Loch Creeran is home to the world's best example of spectacular reefs built by tube worms called serpolids. These are Scotland's equivalent of coral reefs, providing homes for many other species. The BBC filmed these unique serpolid reefs in 2011 for their series Hebrides Islands on the Edge. The Scottish Government is obliged to ensure beyond reasonable scientific doubt that no human activity is harming the reefs in the Loch Curran SAC. This is by no means certain. In October 2021, we came to dive at exactly the same spot where the BBC had filmed 10 years earlier. The reason Loch Curran is a special area of conservation is to protect circulid reefs. Serpulid reefs are amazing and so rare. There are only two sites in Britain where these are known to occur and very few worldwide. David, how was it? Well, it was very depressing. Uh, I spent an hour and a half on the seabed. I zigzagged up and down between 8 and 13 metres where there had been circulids. I found very few small circulids still alive on the rocks. And I found a lot of rubble. Filmed a lot of rubble of broken, what had been circulid, these big bushes that come right out of the seabed. I didn't find a single one of these bushes in all that time underwater. So the reefs, the so, reefs are gone? I, well, I think for the place we dived, and we believe that was the same place that was filmed 10 years ago, we did take some trouble to get the positions correct, and the search of the sleep will be gone. The large upright circuits have all gone here. Between 2011 and 2018, more than a third of Loch Creeran's reefs had died, according to Scotland's 2020 marine assessment. Over the same period, Loch Creeran has been increasingly polluted by fish farming. Scottish sea farms use hydrogen peroxide and pesticides such as emamectin benzoate to control sea lice. Pesticide use in Scotland increased markedly during the decade when Loch Creeran's reefs collapsed. According to SEPA, emamectin benzoate remains toxic in the seabed for more than four years. Between 2002 and 2014, Emamectin levels on Loch Creeran's seabed breached SEPA's environmental standards nine times. In 2018, SEPA concluded that its environmental standards for emamectin do not adequately protect marine life.
but Scottish Sea Farms Loch Creeran Farm has been allowed to carry on discharging Emma Mactin in the same quantities as before. They also pressure wash toxic copper-based anti-fouling into the loch from the farm cages. In a year, a typical fish farm deposits around 600 tonnes of faeces and 54 tonnes of dissolved nitrogen into the loch. In January 2019, Scottish Sea Farms opened its new salmon hatchery at Barcaldon. It discharges effluent into the loch through an old pipe that is barely underwater at low tide. The end of the pipe is just there where the, uh, where the concrete pad is. The pipe is so shallow that SEPA's pollution limits can only be met by making these discharges at high tide. Discharges include at least 27 tonnes of dissolved inorganic nitrogen annually, which can cause harmful planktonic blooms. In 2020, such a planktonic bloom combined with sea lice and disease to kill thousands of salmon in Loch Creeran's fish farm. Scottish Sea Farms Hatchery also discharges toxic formaldehyde and bronopol into the loch. The hatchery's dissolved nitrogen discharges are too large to meet SEPA's pollution mixing zone rules with the present outfall pipe. For almost three years, the company made these discharges without an up-to-date car pollution license. In September 2021, SEPA issued a new discharge license without consulting Nature Scott about possible harm to Loch Creeran's reefs. SEPA said the reefs are recovering, ignoring Nature Scott's latest 2020 survey documenting their collapse. The condition of the reef's feature has been referred to the category unfavourable declining by Heriot Watt University. SEPA also did not assess the cumulative impact that fish farm pesticides could be having on the reefs. It did not mention Loch Creeran's 2020 planktonic bloom or that dissolved fish farm nutrients might have helped cause this bloom. It did not investigate how such planktonic blooms might affect the loch's serpilid reefs. Instead, SEPA stated that any loss of Loch Creeran's reefs may form part of a natural cycle. They have not provided any evidence to support this conclusion, nor SEPA's and Nature Scott's claims that the reefs can recover. There are serious concerns that the aquaculture industry may be having a cumulative impact on the globally important serpilid reefs in Loch Creeran. These impacts on the SAC must be investigated before any further developments are consented. Scottish Sea Farms are planning a large new post-hatchery alongside the present hatchery. This will increase discharges into the loch. If existing activities cannot be shown to be harmless, they should be reduced in line with the precautionary principle. 